everyone always comes into my stream and asks, who do you support? What do you think of this guy? Oh, you hate this guy, right? So I thought I want to do my driver tier list. Uh, so you guys know who I support, who I like. By the way, I want to preface this all by saying I don't dislike anyone. I just don't care about some drivers, right? And I'm sure everyone's the same. Uh, and then afterwards, we're going to get on to doing like some polls and stuff in chat. And you guys can vote on who you guys think, or who you guys like the most, who you guys like the least. And then by the end of it, we should find out in my chat, in my community, um, who is the most loved driver, who is the most, uh, who is the dislike or like the least. Fuck, I can't talk. And it should also calculate the same with the driver pairings. Uh, it will just add them together. First up is Perez. Um, I quite like Perez. I quite like Perez. Um, with Perez, I just love how he's so consistent. His 2020 drive at, at, at Sakir, for instance, was uh, was a turning point for me and really liking him. With his performance in um, in 2021, I, I, I didn't... I know he's driving a very, very hard car, but he obviously didn't deliver the way I expected him to. But I still have a lot of respect for Perez. Drives really well. Very consistent. You know, helping out Max last year in the championship was a very, very, um, I don't know. Like, we didn't expect him to do that after after how he treated Ocon at Force India. So that, I don't know, that helped his case a lot in, in me liking him. I quite like Alonso. Alonso's grown on me this year. Prior to this year, I couldn't care less about him. Like, obviously, I came into the sport um, quite late and I never really got, oh, I never got to see Alonso actually driving in the sport to a high level. But he came on in, he completely turned his attitude around and, and I really, really liked uh, the way he worked with Alpine, treated Ocon. Um, and the way he raced last year, uh, it was it was really, really cool to see. Like, I would be attracted to his mentality if he was a younger driver on the grid, but I don't really care for these older drivers who are on their way out. I, I like to support the young guys, and, you know, because I'm new to the sport, I want to be able to see the young drivers come up over the years. <sighs> I've got to put him in don't care. Part of me wants to put him in air purely because if you're a regular around my stream, you'll know that I'm always poking fun at, uh, at Stroll. Here's probably the driver that if, if there was a driver I hated or like, you know, disliked the most, it'd probably be Stroll. But at the same time, I also like, he's also just such a like bland personality to me that I it, it makes F1 enjoyable to watch. Like I always look forward to hearing Stroll's interviews because it's so funny to me. But he has to go and don't care because I couldn't care less about him, to be honest. He did have a good... Uh, he had an alright rookie year, and I think he is consistent, but consistent at being average. And for me, if you've been in the sport for more than two years, you have to have a reason to be there. And Stroll's been there for, what, five years now? 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. It'll be his sixth year! Sixth year! And he hasn't proven anything to me. He He's had that one pole position, a couple of good wet performances, a few podiums. In reality, he hasn't really beaten his teammate or proven that to me he deserves to be in the sport uh, so yeah, I just don't really care about him. Uh, now Gasly gonna go up in to support. He's not the driver I like support the most but he is my second favorite driver on the grid. Back in 2019 when I first got in the sport and he was at Red Bull he was probably one of the most underwhelming drivers and I was one of his biggest critics uh, I was always roasting him for not performing but as I've learned with Formula 1 as Formula 1's gone on I've realized how much of a talent Gasly is you know his performances he's been putting in at Toro Rosso and Alfa Tari have been absolutely nuts. And I love the redemption story. Again, coming back to the underdog thing, I love young drivers who have something to prove. And, you know, I've hated on Gasly for his performances as Red Bull. And he's come out and he's proved me wrong. And I love that. And, you know, his personality as well. He's just a really, really nice guy. Um, I'd say even very humble as well. You know I mean? He doesn't give off those, like, kind of arrogant vibes that, like, Max or Lewis or Leclerc give off. And, yeah, I, I really, really like Gasly. It's weird. Again, for me with Latifi, I, I just, I don't care. I don't care about him right now. He's had two years in the sport now where he's done nothing. I mean, his his rookie season was very below par, in my opinion. And he stepped it up a little bit last year. I, I If I have to say, most improved driver on the grid last year. One of the most improved drivers on the grid last year. So props to Latifi for that. I don't know. I just don't really care for I don't really care for Latifi. I don't see him as a future world champ. I don't see him as ha being anything in the sport other than in a, a low tier driver. So yeah, for me, don't care. I didn't really care about Giovinazzi. Ah, oh, it's weird. And don't care should just be the same category at this point. I don't know. I don't really care about Giovinazzi too much. He was in the sport for three years. Again, like these other two, didn't really prove much to me. But the thing with Giovinazzi was, I, I kind of liked his personality. He was a bit, he was a bit, he was a nice guy. Uh, he got along with all the other drivers on the grid. He at least gave me something to want to like him for, which was, you know, his constantly doing some good qualifyings and driving through the field. I believe, wasn't in 2019, he made up the most places or most places off opening laps or 
something like that. He was really, really good at the back of the field, I felt. All right, next up, Max Verstappen. Uh, I'm going to go straight up to Love. I mean, coming back to the underdog, the young guy. You know, he's came into the sport and been firing on all cylinders ever since. From 2016, starting off his Red Bull career with a win. Always putting it to Daniel Ricciardo. Then dominating Albon and Gasly to them winning a championship. How can you not like Max? I mean, um, I do sometimes look at his aggressive driver and go, oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. But um, at the end of the day, last season, I was supporting Max in the championship. And, uh, you know, I've got to put him up there with the other guys in the in the love category. I don't know. I love sounds weird. I don't know. Love sounds weird to say. I don't love them, but you got what I'm saying. This is a weird one for me. Do I like Bottas or do I air him? When I first got into the sport, Bottas was my top three favorite drivers on the grid. Just from the way he was presented in Drive to Survive to the way he was driving at the time, early 2019. I just like Bottas's attitude. I like the fact that he was trying to come at, uh, at Hamilton and try to beat him in the championship. But as I got more into the sport, I slowly realized like, oh shit, I don't really like Bottas. Oh, he doesn't really like actually push Hamilton and give him a run for money. Oh, he's not actually that good either. When a Bottas interview comes up, I usually just talk over it. I don't really care for him. I think he under delivered at Mercedes. I think I'll put him in air. Carlos Sainz, uh, strapped to love. Uh, he's on the verge. He's on the verge of someone that I, I would say I support. I mean, obviously, you know, he's just a, a, a cool guy constantly performing very, very well, very consistently at all his teams. Putting the fight to Leclerc last season and ultimately beating in the championship was fucking nuts. Uh, and I cannot wait to see how he performs next year. Uh, next up, Danny Rick. Now, I am Australian and I do like Danny Rick a lot, but I have I don't care for him as much as these other drivers. Uh, again, coming back to the young thing, I feel like for me, Danny Rick's on his way out. I've not been able to watch Danny Rick perform his best. And I think that's a reason why it's like hard for me to want to support Support Danny Rick. I do think he will step up his game at McLaren, but I also was um, was let down a lot by his season last last year and um, his first season at Renault as well. And even when he was doing well at Renault, his second year, I, I just I I don't know. I like him. I like his personality a lot, but I, I've grown to not care too much about his uh, about his driving. Next up, Kimi Raikkonen. Um, I don't really care too much about Kimi. Again, I don't really care uh, about these older drivers. I mean, you know, I'm not saying I dislike these drivers, right? And I'm not saying they're bad drivers. I just for me personally, I don't care too much about Kimmy. You know, all he's done at Alfa Romeo is sit on the radio, sit on the interviews and complain. I know some people like his kind of like funny attitude, but for me, I, I don't I don't really care for that. Even if he was an 18-year-old driver with something to prove, I don't know if I'd like that attitude. In saying that, I'm Conor McGregor's biggest fucking fan. Uh, so I like that kind of like, you know, talk shit attitude. But the way Kimmy does it, it comes off as like a I don't care attitude. And I, I you know, I don't know. I've just never been attached to, to Kimmy Raikkonen personally. Uh, next up, Lando Norris. Uh, I gotta put in love. I, I last season especially, he definitely proved to me that he's a driver that that I like a lot and uh, want to support. Or like, I'm looking forward to watching each week. Like the best way to describe the love category is the guys that I look forward to every weekend. Going like, you know, uh, I'm looking forward to listening to what they have to hear, say in the interview, how they're gonna perform and quality in the race. Uh, and Lando's one of those drivers for me. I think a potential future world champ, the future of McLaren. Sometimes his attitude can be a bit like condescending, but he also presents some himself quite well um, and obviously being a twitch guy and you know being a part of quadrant man's literally just streams in his free time and you know runs a content team oh it's cool to see it's cool to see it's something i look forward to each race week lewis hamilton now unlike bottas when i first got into the sport uh i didn't really care too much about lewis you know i i saw him as the the winning guy the you know the guy who's dominating the sport the guy who you know was winning it all and i don't care about that but i'm very much someone who watched sports to watch the best of the best compete and as i got more into the sport and over the three years, Lewis has definitely made his way up in, into the love category. I mean, at the end of the day, the three years that I've been watching Formula One, leading on to the fourth year now, Lewis Hamilton has been the top dog. I can understand some people hate watching people win, but I personally watch sports to watch the best of the best compete. And he has was the best in 2019, the best in 2020, and was top two in 2021. The way he handled Abu Dhabi was another huge thing for me. Like, the way he handled that whole situation, I, I think was, was very good for the circumstance he was put in. You can argue with the FIA prize giving and stuff like that. But after, straight after the race, uh, that was a, a lot of gained a lot of respect for me. I talk to anyone about Formula One, and it's Lewis Hamilton. You know, that's not just because he is the best, but that's because he's he's done so much outside of the sport to do that. And yeah, I, I just respect that a lot. Uh, next up, Ocon. Oh, Ocon's a weird one for me. I, I I think I'd still put him in air, maybe top of air. I don't really care for Ocon too much. When he was at Force India, I think he was uh, a, a young guy with something to prove. He obviously got kicked out to or put to reserve drive for Mercedes. Had a very poor season against Ricardo, and then an average season or a decent season against Alonso. I don't think he, he hasn't proven much to me as a driver and as a personality, I don't really care. Like, I don't know. I'm not a 
I really attracted to his person. I think at the end of the day, you know, this is my tier list, how I personally perceive drivers, you know, and I personally just don't really care for Ocon. Uh, next up, Mazepin, obviously easy for me, down and don't care. Um, I wouldn't go to the length of saying I hate the guy and I dislike him, but he's obviously coming to the sport as a pay driver. Uh, the big scandal before he joined um, is absolute fuckwit on social media uh, prior to joining Formula One. He's then coming to Formula One, trying to get rid of his past, which is, uh, you know, which is which is cool by me. But to, to go out and, you know, hate on the guy to the point of, you know, death threats and stuff like that, that's way too far for me. You know, like for me, I just, I just don't care about him. I just do not care. He's joined the sport, pay driver, proved absolutely fucking nothing, got absolutely stomped by his rookie teammate while his dad is funding the team. His personality is quite bland to me and I, I just don't care for him. Uh, next up, Yuki Tsunoda. Yuki's never interested me. Uh, even in F2, coming into F1 and then in F1, I've never really cared for him. I don't know why. I would like to put him in like, maybe if he starts performing, but yeah, in F2, I didn't really care too much about. I mean, he had some good performances in F2. I never, I never really gravitated towards him. And then when he joined F1, he was very hyped up. And then he came in and undelivered and not just undelivered, but completely missed the boat. I don't know. For me, I just, I just don't really care about Yuki too much. Uh, next up, Sebastian Vettel. Part of me wants to put Sebastian in like, I, I, I think he's achieved so much in the sport and, you know, going back and watching these 2017, 18 highlights now, you know, realizing what he was doing with Ferrari. But at the same time, I got to put him in as well. I just, I don't, I don't care too much. I mean, when he was in, uh, in 2019, alongside Leclerc, I felt he very much undelivered in that car. I think people hyped him up a lot. And then in 2020, completely undelivered. But what he's doing behind the scenes is up there with Lewis for me. Like the pride stuff at the Middle East and Grand Prix. Um, just all the stuff he's doing behind the scenes, all the B stuff, the helmets that he brings, all the behind the scenes charity stuff that he's doing. Uh, but for me, I, I've just never really cared about uh, about Vettel too much. Too honest, I want to put Vettel up there with these guys, but I, I just don't think he's on the same, same level for me. All right, next up, Charles Leclerc. Leclerc is the driver I support in Formula 1. Some people always ask me, what made you support Leclerc? For me, it was I was getting into the sport uh, in 2019, um, and obviously Leclerc had just made his move to Ferrari, and the rookie season that he had, that just stood out to me. From his insane rookie season at Alfa Romeo, absolutely dominating Marcus Ericsson, and getting into Q3 so many times at Alfa Romeo, and getting a lot of points, to then coming into Ferrari in 2019, and matching Vettel in his second race, going on to get the win before his car broke down. That, that That's what made me want to support Leclerc, and ever since I've been, I've been a big supporter of Leclerc. I do find his attitude, you know, sometimes he can he can be a little bit arrogant like the Max, like the Lewis, but I think that's what's going to make him a world champion in the future. You know, as much as I love Gasly, I don't think Gasly will ever win a world championship because I don't think he's as aggressive and as determined as drivers like Max and Lewis and Leclerc are. Next up, Mick Schumacher. Don't really care about Mick either, to be honest. Nothing's really attracted me to Mick too much. Mick's a nice guy. Don't get me wrong. He's performed quite well and uh, he performed very well in F2. He came into Haas, but I don't know. He, he, I didn't think he did much at Haas to make me want to care too much about him or support him anymore. He dominated Mazepin, but I was expecting him to get to Q2 a few more times. Anyway, I think he's a good guy and I think with more time in the sport, he'll probably move his way up the list, but as of right now, I just F for me. F for me. Uh, next up, Russell. I really do like Russell, but I, I wouldn't say I support him or love him a lot. He's a great young driver and he is the future of the sport along with your Max Verstappens and a lot, uh, along with Charles Leclerc and Lando Norris in the future, but I'm not a big fan of his attitude sometimes. I, I, I think the way he presents himself in media comes across as quite cocky and don't get me wrong he's he's dominated all his opponents at Williams but he's also not really done too much in in the race pace and yeah I, li I like Russell but I, I wouldn't put him up on the on the love category with the other guys because he hasn't really um done too much for me on the on the racing side of things next up Guangyu Zhou we've not seen him in F1 yet so for right now I just couldn't care less if he was a young driver well, I mean he is young but if he was like a Piastri like he's coming in and he's determined you know like he's proven himself in F2 and he's he's got that seat on purely off merit he might be a little bit higher up, but the fact that he got in, um, obviously mainly due to the sponsor stuff, uh, along with his performance in uh, in F2, I've not really cared for Guangyu Zhou. And again, this will probably change in the future. He might move his way up. Uh, next up, Alex Albon. I'm going to put him in like. I've grown to love Alex Albon's personality. Again, just like with Gasly, he was probably one of the guys I critiqued the most. I just didn't like his attitude at Red Bull. When he was he was having a bad race and he would be so down on himself and so negative. And like, don't get me wrong, he's a very emotional guy and that's fine. But even sometimes he'd have a really good race like he got a podium was it one or two races and as he, di he didn't like he didn't seem to care and it's like you've just got a podium which is so rare for you and and, and and you know even in his interviews he's like yeah i got a podium today like i don't know i really like albon's like off track attitude but on track i've never really been a fan of it that is my tier list who would i support in the future of f1 when they make their way to f1 one is definitely oscar piastri obviously being australian i want to support australians so bad first off one f3 then one f2 and now he's a reserve driver for alpine he's such a good guy as well
well. He's so determined. And the second Piastri makes it to F1, I'm buying his t-shirt. I'm buying his jersey. And I'll be supporting him for the whole time that he's there. Uh, another driver I will support once they hopefully make it to F1 is Liam Lawson. Another really, really great young guy. Just great personality. Went into DTM his first proper GT series. And it should have won the championship. But his personality off the track is fucking amazing. He's had a tough time at F2. And I hope at Carlin this year, he has a good time in that car. Because, yeah, he, he, he's had a he had a very, very rough time uh, in F2 last year. And another driver I support uh, is Frederick Vesti. For anyone who watches my stream a lot, you'll know uh, about mid last year, uh, Frederick came into my stream and uh, hit us with a follow. He streams on Twitch as well. I checked out his stream. He asked me if I want to do open lobbies. Um, and yeah, I've gotten to know Frederick. We got, we got to do open lobbies together. If you haven't seen it yet, on the YouTube channel, there's a video of me and Frederick doing open lobbies together. It was a very, very cool experience. And he's such a lovely guy. We've chatted a little bit off stream as well. Hopefully one day when Frederick does make it to F, uh, to Formula 1, I'll be uh, one of Frederick's biggest supporters. Oh, I haven't, I haven't done this in order. Maybe I should do this in order real quick. All right, that's my order there. Done, 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 done. Uh, but now we're going to move on to the fun part of the stream. Here we are. Uh, essentially, what's going to happen is I'm going to run a poll on the stream in the top right corner of the stream. You guys are going to vote 10 if you love them, you know, seven if you like them, five if you're like middle, three if you're like eh, one if you don't uh, don't like them. And then we're going to add up those points, put it in the in the, t in, in the list. And then depending on how many votes it is, it will then turn into a ranking. And then we'll be able to see who you guys like the most, who my chat likes the most and who they uh, who you guys like the least. All right, let's get on into it. All right, we're going to end the poll there. Plus 150 equals... So 287 from 49 votes gives Lewis a score of 5.86. Holy fuck. That's your guys' opinion, I guess. That's your guys' opinion. Let's have a little bit of a look through. Least light drive on the grid was Guang Zhou. I guess that makes sense. People just haven't got anything to support yet. Don't know what they're supporting. Alice Elbon rated uh, was ranked higher than I thought, to be honest. Vettel comes out on top as the most light driver within my community. Uh, and then coming in second is Max Verstappen with 8.32 and then third Pierre Gasly with 8.28 Carlos Sainz sorry sorry Carlos Sainz third most light driver then in fourth Pierre Gasly then in fifth Lando Norris sixth is Daniel Ricciardo. Then we got Charles Leclerc, Sergio Perez, Fernando Alonso. Let's take a look at the constructor pairings or like the driver pairings. Okay, most loved driver pairing on the grid. Not fucking surprised was McLaren. Second most, Ferrari. Wow, that's actually fucking surprising. I thought it'd be Red Bull, 100%. Then third is uh, is Red Bull. And then fourth is Alpha Tauri. And then Aston Martin. Wow, then Mercedes. Okay, Mercedes. Considering how much lower these guys are than I thought. Mercedes has been ranked quite high and least liked pairing on the grid is wow, Haas. Mick Schumacher couldn't even bring up the hate from Mazepin. Bottas brought up Rongu Zhou's quite high. All right. Well, this has been a very big learning experience. I very much enjoyed it. I've learned a lot. I've learned that people don't give Lewis the respect that he deserves. People are still very skeptical on Russell. People fucking love big old Chevy boy and people just aren't sure yet about Guangyu Zhou and still hate Mazepin. We've learned, we've learned a lot or we've confirmed a lot. We've learned a lot. We've confirmed a lot. Um, I've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed this a lot. Thank you guys for making the stream good. It was actually really, really good. Probably the best stream of the year so far. So, thank you for making it. Is this a fatal attraction or something brand new? I got a strange emotion. Do you feel it too?